It is a brand new edition of Hockey and Hounds. Jason Martinez and Flyers head coach John Tortorella brought to you by Ticketmaster. Make more memories live. I ask you how you're doing, but I imagine frustrated is part of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, you know, it's kind of a perfect storm. We're letting pucks in and we're not scoring. Um, but we're still there. Yeah. So we just, we just got to stay on top of it here and not get into any type of panic. Uh, and just try to find a way, some way, ugly way, uh, any way to f- get a result with two points. Is so much of it right now about just regaining some control of the fate, you know, control of just get one win and just, yeah. just, you, you can't look at all everything. You got to just look at micro. Yeah. I, I see. I, I don't think we've been playing bad hockey until the Columbus game. Mm-hmm. It, it, we were sloppy. Uh, gave up more chances uh, than we had the prior games. Our chances have actually come down in some of the games we've lost. Um, but the Columbus game, a lot of people around our goalie, a lot of screenshots. Uh, I didn't like the game at all. But the other games, we haven't really played poorly, other than that second period against the Islanders. Yeah. Um, so we just, we 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 just gotta. Someone's gotta feel it, right? Uh, mm-hmm. TK's got to score a goal. So we, we've just got to get some sort of uh, swagger back in our game, running out of games. And uh, uh, But it's not like it's just absolute chaos with our team. We're just we're letting pucks in and we're not scoring. It's hard yeah. to win that way. Um, you know, you talk about body language and how you handle stressful situations. Some guys wear it in different ways. You can see it in their body language, the way they carry themselves or slamming their sticks. How important is it for, you know, the leaders on your group to get that under control and say, you know what? I'm not panicked. You, the other guys that maybe aren't leaders aren't going to get panicked as well. Yeah. I I think that's some of the the things that go on in a situation. We've, we've said it all. The room is really good. It's not like they've given in. It's not like someone's lazy. It's some, I think it's gone more to just wanting to do more. And uh, sometimes you end up putting yourself in more of a jam by trying to do more. Um, so I, 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 I think the word that's we're using around the room, and I think some players are talking, it's just being patient. Let's just, we Take can what play. Comes to you. Yeah, yeah, let the game come to you. We've won some games this year, and l- let's, just, let's just keep some patience here. I, I think after that seven game star started teams we played, yeah. It, it's kind of gone. It, it, that, that was concerned about that. We get six out of 14. I, I thought we could have got nine. I thought we played well enough to get nine out of there. Mm-hmm. So I was really encouraged about where we were going to go, but it, it just seems like we're, we've lost ourselves a little bit in an easier part of the schedule. And that's the national hockey league right there. You know, the crazy part is, is you guys on the road this year against top teams have been great and not against teams that you would deem as inferior, at least inferior in the standings. It's been a bit of a struggle mm-hmm. What's like the human nature element to that? It's easy to get up for the the good yeah. team. We got something to prove. Yeah, measuring yeah. stick, all those yeah. cliche, silly sayings. Yeah. But it's it's easy to say, you know, as a coach, you know, don't look by this team. Don't look by this mm-hmm. team. There's human nature that yeah. comes into play too. It's something that, and like I always explain it to the guys. I know you think it that we got to worry about this team. But really think it, you know, because it's it, your soul. <laughs> yeah, you, you do. You got to dig in because human nature is it's not we're not playing the Boston Bruins tonight, you yeah. know, and it's just it, it's that way. And uh, um, but you know what? We're still in it. And I I, I, I just feel good about it. I think something's going to happen. I, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I've been concerned about the goaltending. It, yeah. It's been a lot for us. And to put Ivan in. It's a lot, and there's been struggles. You know, it's a big we, ask. You know, yeah, we, we've had struggles there, and uh, not we, we don't even have a chance if Earth doesn't do the things he did to get us there. So we have to understand that we've got to protect that a little bit better and grow out from there and see if we can find a way to scratch out a win. Is it a simple, you know, just a, a particular type of play could happen? Because I've always find it fascinating in sports. Like we talk about momentum swings in games, but the momentum of struggling and the momentum of confidence. You know, those two things are like always kind of push pulling each other. They're contagious too. 
yeah. to your whole group. It's it it fascinates me why. Yeah, I I, I look at the Buffalo game. Uh, we tie it up. We have another chance with Pales comes down, beats a guy, hits the post on a breakaway. Yeah. If we go bang bang and go up two one, I think we're swelling. I think you recover. Yep. Uh, we we play Montreal coming up. If we let's say we go bang bang and score a couple. That's how quickly a recovery can be. Yeah. It, it's a, it, the game is amazing to me when you think you're just dead and a couple of good plays happen. And next thing you know, it goes around the team and another big play, uh, another block shot, another great save. And then you start regrouping that way. I'm not sure when it's coming. Yeah. It's going to come here soon because we're running out of minutes. It's like a surfer. You don't know when the set of good waves is coming in, but geez, come <laughs> on already. you jump on it. Yeah, <laughs> you got to ride it. Um, uh, let me ask you about belief because yep. to me it sounds like you, you have a lot of belief still we believe and that room had a lot yeah. of belief yeah. is that still there oh it's still there good it's still there and it, it, it's such a uh it's such an important part of it that's what i love about our room is that that room's fine that way mm. I, I think just think they're so aggravated uh that we've let more teams come in now we're on the outside looking in part of it's part of the process quite honestly that you have to go through and uh, would have liked to have it differently, uh, uh, but this is where we're at. The, the belief is there. There, there. It's not that at all. It's just we've got to get something good to happen for us. Um, one of the things that's been so different with your club this year versus last year was the way you came in and played in transition, the way you stressed opponents constantly yeah. by just kill the play, go. Just constantly, you feel like somebody's holding your head underwater yeah. when the team's attacking you that way. You haven't been able to do that of late. Yeah. Do you have to kind of transition the way you play a little bit? It, it's a it, it's a great question because the way the games are played now by the opposing teams, and listen, we're not sneaking up on anybody and how nope. we play anymore. It books out. Yeah. And they, they know we play hard. They know the transition part of our game has been a key part of our offense. But the way teams are playing now is they're defending harder. They're controlling that neutral zone better. They're not allowing... Uh, those long plays through them. So we've got to find a way to score goals by forechecking. Yeah. That's why we did it last year. That's all yeah. we did was grind last year. Really didn't have much of a transition game at all. We changed our style this year, but we got to let something bleed into us here as far as a little bit of grind, throwing pucks to the paint and, and trying to get some tips. Uh, I think a, one of the biggest weaknesses of a, a, offensively, there's two of them, is our power play. And we just don't have enough people in front of the net. Yeah, We do not have people in front of the net. I, if we're going to find a way to grind and get some goals here, our power play has got to somehow, and it's been awful all year long, we got to somehow get it to be average for a few games here. Yeah. And then we got to get people in front of the net and score some of those goals. Some of that's mindset too. You know, power play, you think, let's, let's have that pretty three passes to yeah. a one-timer goal. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to simplify it yes. and just throw the garbage there. And, yes. And everybody go there like, you know. And that bleeds into fire. your five on five. Yeah. You know, that bleeds into five on five. That I think that we're going to have to find a way. You know, you have the power play early in that Columbus yeah. game at the double. How deflating is when the power play has been obviously such a big, you know, point of emphasis sure. for its lack of ability to score. Four minute power play. You guys naturally have a little letdown after yeah. that. And the other team feels a little jump because yeah. they just killed a double minor. It's it's one of the most it's an interesting dynamic to get a power play, and then especially four minutes early in a game. Yeah, early power plays. I think some coaches don't even want them because it determines it, too much because it, it does it changes yeah. the mentality, and it did. I, 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 when it, when we had the four minutes, I thought we had more chances, but after I broke down the tape, really didn't generate much. And it gives them some juice, mm -hmm. but but listen, I, I, I the, the Buffalo game we have twenty two chances they have twelve. We played a good game there. Yeah. We just didn't find a way to win that hockey game. Yeah, Pekka Lukanen had a really good. He was really. Good. You guys attacked them the middle of the ice yes. incredibly well. Yeah. Everything was from inside. It was the way we need to play. Yeah, you know, Columbus. I know it's back to back, but we have to find a way. We just were we were sloppy. Yeah. We still generated some offense, but we were sloppy in front of Earth, and I just think we gave up too much. Um, when you when you look at, you know, you're so far into the season at this point. How, how do you keep your message? Are you using different people to message to the to the group? You know, using Shaws, using other people to 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 try and break through. Yeah, we're, we're, we're it's collaborative. Players and coaches, we're just talking it out. Mm -hmm. uh, at this point, you're not going in there and going Herb Brooks. No, 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 no. no. And, and quite honestly, it's not so much filling them with tape either as far as you know we need to do this on this coverage 
they know they know now mm -hmm. it, it, it's it's almost it's almost being a cheerleader yeah. and uh and trying to help them along the way i, I think there's certain times uh, they need to be pushed certain times especially with four games left now we we just got to cheer ourselves on here we got to we got to get some sort of feeling of feeling good it's it's our it's our worst streak of the year coming at the worst time of the year yeah. no sense of over taping them over teaching we got to relax them like today's practice we'll we'll, we'll move to blood and play some games yeah. we're just going to play some uh, small games and let them enjoy themselves get on the flight and try to relax and go out and play yeah try to take the temperature down yeah. a little bit yeah. uh, let's talk about her Harriet, we've got, we featured Harriet earlier this season. Um, she was brought into to pause. Uh, she, they found her actually in a bus maintenance building. And she spent the day there hanging out with the mechanics. I'm sure they were feeding her and doing the whole thing. Um, which tells you, she comes in, she's hanging out with everybody. Good to go. Good demeanor about the dog. Let me show you the video. Because I need people to see this video. Yeah. Because she is so playful and just oh she's beautiful yeah i mean she'll roll over on her back let you get the belly i mean look at her face how can't she look look at her look at the tips look at them yeah. on her oh. <laughs> oh, we have this dog in a halloween costume still yes <laughs> but look at that i mean come on when you can get the dog on her back get the belly and the chest like that she's an absolute beauty gets along with other dogs yep um yeah we then this is this is our second time. You can tell she nursed quite a bit there in that mm -hmm. video. And um, this is the second time we're talking about Harriet. Yeah. Well, we got to get going here. And uh, how I wonder how she ends up in the bus station. Does someone just drop her off? Yeah, or just abandon her somewhere? Yeah, right. Just, she just migrates to there. Yeah, yeah. It's unbelievable to me. Yeah. That people can do that, but well, she's she did, a beautiful dog. Beautiful dog, and she, she's obviously very healthy. She did need eye surgery. It's been done. Um, she needs some daily ointment from time to time uh, to put on the eye. Very playful dog, snuggling. Uh, one of her previous foster parents called her Miss Roly Poly because you can see in the video she likes to roll under the back until you can get the belly. Is she there or is she being fostered right now? I think she's a pause yeah. right now. Yeah, okay. So, okay. Well, we at least got to get a foster, right? Yeah, just to get her immediately. To, just to get her to understand that part of it. We don't know her past, how she was treated at a home. Uh, yeah, so let's – it's a video. I mean, look at her there in the picture. It's just a gorgeous animal. I hope hope some people that, – that video should sell her right there. Exactly, yeah. And she can be in a home with another dog, She'll with another playful dog, uh, maybe not a cat, which is the case with most dogs. Um, but we got to find Harriet a home. So what people need to do is go to a, uh, the Hockey and Hounds homepage. All the adoption info and Harriet's there. Uh, go to philadelphiaflyers.com slash hockey and hounds. Again, PhiladelphiaFlyers.com slash Hockey Hounds. And just do us this solid to watch the video. Yeah. And then when you watch the video, even if you can't adopt or foster, send it to somebody you think maybe can. Yeah. Let's make it viral. That's my that's my message. It, it, it worked with Coffee Cake, it right? It did. Yep. And several. Yes. Yeah, several of the ones that we've yeah. talked about. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And, and go see her. T try to take her out for a bit, maybe for a couple mm -hmm. of hours. I'm not sure what protocol is there. At pause just to get her out of there and spend some time with her. I think that's when you get a true indication of what the dog's about when you're away from other dogs and yep. and basically in a in a normal setting for an animal. And if you have a dog, bring the dog with you. Yeah. Let them meet. Let them yeah. let them play. Let a them bit. walk together. Yeah. Yes. See how see how they get on together. So uh check out Harriet again at the PhiladelphiaFlyers.com slash hockey and hounds homepage. All the adoption info is there. Um, last thing I want to ask you about a particular player. Um, he went through a pretty tough injury earlier this season, Noah Cates. Um, he's had to move back into the middle because of the, unavail the lack of availability of Sean Couturier. But it seems like his game is back on the come a little bit here. Play, he's, you know, we found we, he's, we weren't sure of him as a center last year because he came in as a wing. Yeah. I think he plays better as a center this year. I think he played so much center last year. I think putting him in the middle uh, helped him. Um, controls the ice a little yeah, bit. Yeah, stronger on the puck, mm -hmm. uh, scores a goal. Had, and willing to defend. Yeah, he, he yeah, he we know that that's what he's going to do, yeah. but he just seems more he's able to use his legs more. I think he's more in motion at the center ice position. Mm -hmm. Wing sometimes you're playing at 160 feet, you're stopping a lot more. Yeah. And uh yeah, so uh I, I think it's helped his game. Not sure where Sean is yet as far as with the upcoming game. So Kate's will probably be at center. Uh an important guy not only to keep pucks out and we've struggled there 
but maybe kicking a goal, another one. He yeah. scored the other night. Maybe it's, we've got some guys pressing. Maybe those are the guys that can help us, you know. Yeah. Ole scores his first goal yeah. the other night. Playing Jennings with scores as well. Jennings scores. Yeah. And uh, we've got to get our main guys going a little bit more consistently. Hopefully, when we go to Montreal, we'll get it going. Take a little supplemental scoring from those guys you don't expect it yeah. from. Maybe some blue line scoring yeah. as well, and that's a big part of it. Um, Torts, best of luck this week. Thanks for doing this. And everybody check out the Hockey and Hounds homepage, philadelphiaflyers.com slash hockey and hounds. Harriet, go check her out.